cat welcome or welcome back to my channel i haven't said that in a while because i don't think i said that in my first video back but hello and welcome to the start of a stabathon i'm so excited to participate in this it feels like a nice kickoff to the spooky season and i'm super excited and i love all the people who are hosting it i will have everyone linked down below if you want to check out their channels and their instagrams so i'm gonna go through my tbr semi quickly um, I talked about it a little bit more in length in my last vlog, but I already get the feelings that I'm gonna change a few things around. Also, sorry if you can hear a lawnmower in the back. I've been waiting for like 20 minutes to start filming this and I just wanna get it done, but they're freaking landscaping. So the four books that I am, as of right now, planning to read this week are The Boy in the Woods, The Shadow People, Campfire, a word I still don't know how to say and I will never learn how to say, um, and razor blade tears. The reason I'm kind of thinking of changing some things around is because I want to read some really scary shit, just what I'm in the mood for. And I think razor blade tears and the shadow people are more like mystery uh, than thriller or horror, which I, is what I'm really in the mood for right now. But we'll see. I think today I'm going to start with campfire, whatever. Um, that is the horror anthology. And then throughout the week, we'll just see what I'm in the mood for. I am working today. I'm just on my lunch break right now. Um, I have about two more hours after work. I do need to edit. I want to get up the last video um, really quickly because I'm already a few days behind. I talked about my TBR for this readathon in it, um, which is just kind of irrelevant now because it's already started. So after I finish work, edit, I will hopefully start reading. Okay, so I brought you in here to make my coffee with me today because I kind of want to make a fun one. I'm thinking like Reese's peanut butter cup. I've never tried peanut butter in my coffee before, but I think it'd be good, like a mocha iced coffee, peanut butter cold foam. So let's try it. I got this powdered peanut butter to do it with. I've never used this stuff before. Okay, so how much should I put in? Maybe like a tablespoon? Then some heavy whipping cream. And then, where's my frother? We'll froth. I kind of want to try this first, make sure it's like, you know, good and peanut buttery. Ooh, that's good. Okay, I have a glass with some ice and I drizzled some chocolate sauce in there. I also brewed this coffee last night and I added about a tablespoon of the chocolate sauce. So I'm gonna add this in, waste. I'm using like a million glasses right now. <laughs> I'm gonna add a little bit of almond milk and then we're gonna add the cold foam. I feel like this is gonna take a while to add. It's pretty thick. Well, it's not too bad. Okay, she looks gorgeous. Hopefully it's good. Let me get a straw. I got a red one because I figured it was the most stabathon esque I really hope this is good. Hmm, it's like a good mocha. I don't really taste the peanut butter. I wonder if I can just add this like into the drink a little bit. I don't see why not. Let's sprinkle some in and try not to make a mess. <laughs> oh, and I made a mess. Okay, the extra peanut butter made this really good. So I think next time I would do like a tablespoon and a half, two tablespoons of the PB powder. Mm, this is yummy. like 11 p.m. now. I just finished reading the first section in the anthology, which is the, I forget exactly what it's called, but it's like the haunted house portion. Yes, spook houses. And oh my God, am I spooked? I probably shouldn't have waited until it was so late to start reading this. Uh, I have like almost every light in, the, <laughs> in my apartment on and I'm like just about to go to bed but I'm freaked the fuck out. I've been noting down my ratings for each story and I'll do an average of all of them at the end. Um, but I figured I would also talk about my favorites from, from each section. So in this section, I really liked Making a Believer by Chad Lutsky. I gave that four and a half stars. 
um, Ride Like the Devil by Jason Parent. I also gave four and a half stars. And my absolute favorite was Cabin Fever by Sydney Richardson. I gave that five stars. Also, first, um, I want to read the author description. I just thought it was really funny. It says, Sydney Richardson is a thing made from coffee grounds and the dirt from the parking lot of an abandoned blockbuster. <laughs> Like, what the fuck? Um, I love that. And I'm definitely going to check out more of their stuff because how I rate if something is truly scary or not, when I'm super scared, like my eyes tear up. Uh, I don't know what that is or how to explain it. I just know it happens. And this story made that happen. It was so fucking scary. Oh, I just got the chills thinking about it. I'm going to have to watch like New Girl or something really happy and lighthearted to go to sleep because right now I'm <laughs> I'm so freaked out. Good morning, welcome to day two of Stabathon. I've been at work for a little bit. I'm still in my PJs. Most days I try to change out of like what I slept in, um, but once in a while I just want to stay in my pajamas. I'm just very tired. I just made myself a coffee. I made myself a pumpkin spice coffee with a caramel cold foam delicious also i did not mention yesterday i started the audiobook for razor blade tears by s.a cosby i think i'm just about like eight percent into it or something not too far along and this is a thriller where we are following two fathers whose sons were in a relationship and were murdered presumably because of their sexuality and the fathers never really accepted their sons because they were gay um, but now they that they have been killed they're kind of going on a little revenge trip i haven't heard many people talk about this book i think it's a fairly recent release but the people i have heard talk about it absolutely rave about it and so far i am tentatively enjoying it i'm enjoying the writing um and the storytelling but one thing i'm not liking is it's giving me the vibes of I don't know if you have ever seen those posts or like TikToks, they're on like Facebook and it's like, oh, my mom or dad six years ago kicking me out of the house for being gay and then my mom or dad today with me at Pride. And it's supposed to be like heartwarming and like, oh, they came around and they accepted me. I don't find those posts nice or heartwarming. I don't know, I'm just... I guess I'm not a fan of like a redemption arc in that situation. And in here is almost kind of worse because just now both of the fathers are like, oh, I wish I accepted my son when he was alive, but ne because I didn't, now that he's dead, I have to get revenge for him. And like, I don't know, it's just so shitty to me. And I don't, I don't think we're necessarily supposed to be like rooting for the dads and really feeling for them. But I do feel like it's setting up to give them some sort of redemption arc. And I feel like at some point we're meant to be rooting for them. And I just don't like this kind of thing. Like, why don't you support your son before he was murdered? But yeah, like I said, writing is really, really good. So I definitely want to continue. Um, they do have the book at my library. So I do want to go pick it up because I would like to read it physically, but I just figured I had the audiobook from my library as well, so I thought I would just start it. My boyfriend is on his way here. Um, if you watched my last vlog, he came and visited me, and then he went to his brother's, um, who lives in North Carolina, for his bachelor party, and now, so he's on his way back home to New, to New Jersey, but the highway he has to take passes, like, right through my town, so um, he's just gonna stop by for, like, a day or two but that means I probably won't vlog too much for the rest of the day. I don't know what other book I want to start today. Um, I'm kind of still in the mood for something really scary. The anthology is just like really doing it for me. And I do want to read more of that. There's, I think there's five sections. Um, so I think I'll read like one section a day. So maybe I'll do that, but I kind of would like to start another book as well. Okay, so last night I read the second section in the anthology and I really liked it. I think this was the slasher one. I don't remember if, had, if it had like another fun little name, but it was really, really good. My favorites from this section were A Sleepwalker's Hands by Corey Ferenkopf, which I gave four and a half stars. And my absolute favorite was So Many Teeth by John... Gauthier, which I gave five stars. This one was so creepy. I'm really, really liking this anthology so far, which I'm excited about. 
Um, so as you can see, or maybe not, but it's the next day. So it is day three. Um, like I said, my boyfriend came yesterday. So I was talking to you guys about starting a new book, but I don't really know what I was thinking because I didn't, <laughs> there wasn't much time for me to get that much reading done. Um, I read this section and that was kind of it. My boyfriend and I had a little date night and he also helped me um, set up my wired internet for my gaming setup. So I'm excited to have that back. But he has already left and went back home to New Jersey. So for the rest of the week, I'll have a lot of time to read. Um, I'm just on my lunch right now. I'm making some ramen because I had absolutely nothing else to eat. I'm making chicken noodle soup in my crock pot right now. But other than that, it was just ramen or mac and cheese for lunch. Um, I love ramen, but I know it's not the absolute best meal to have. I'm kind of in the mood for a thriller, so I think tonight I'm gonna start The Shadow People. I don't really know what to expect from this um, because on one hand, it kind of just looks like a detective mystery thriller, but then in the synopsis, they do mention that the detectives are investigating cases that appear to be paranormal or supernatural. And there's talk about like a cult summoning a god. And I don't know if the people just think they're doing that or if they're actually doing that. I think either way, I would like it if it's a good story, you know, like well-written and stuff. Um, but yeah, I don't really know what to expect from it. I just, just clocked out of work, but I have been dying to try these. Um, I got these at the grocery store the last time I went. They are buzz balls. I've seen these, I think on like TikTok and Instagram. And I feel like I've seen people say they're good, but I don't know. They're just like interesting and weird and I want to try them. Um, so I got the sour apple chiller and then the watermelon chiller. Which one should I try? I think I'm going to do sour apple. So it's orange wine with apple and lemon juice and natural flavors. 15% alcohol in like this little itty bitty drink. So I feel like it's gonna taste really strong. Oh my God, that smells good. That smells like an apple airhead. All right, let's see. Holy fuck, that's good. It is pretty strong, but I guess I'll have to see how the other one tastes, but on this one, the like sour apple, appleiness cancels out that strong alcohol flavor. It tastes like apple airhead wine. This is so good. I'm kind of worried, like, am I about to be sloshed off of this? I made it about a fourth of the way through that little bottle and I would like to rescind my previous review. Oh, it got so strong, like, it felt like I was drinking a shot. What I ended up doing was putting it in a glass with a little bit of water and a little bit of orange Mio. That was all I had, but also I figured it would taste okay because it was like orange wine and it's so much better. So maybe this would be good to use in like sangria type things. Like this drink is good. Okay, I'm back again because I started reading The Shadow People and what page am I even on? Oh, well I have an arc so it doesn't tell me. I'm 3% of the way in. And like, this part right here is making me contemplate DNFing this so soon in. Um, so the detectives just showed up to a call, like a robbery. And the suspect is presumably a man wearing a dress though. And the detective says, well, 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 and what do we have here? A few years ago, he would have been able to add a sarcastic comment like little Miss Muffet or something similar. These days, though, there were strict rules in the Met about how to address transvest transvestites and transgenders and anybody who identified as something other than what they actually looked like. Besides, a transgender woman called Diana had recently moved into the flat next to Jerry's, and Jerry really liked her. What the fuck? I understand things in books are not always the author's thoughts or feelings, but like... I still don't want to read something if this is the shit they're going to be spewing. Please ignore my messy closet and my clothes hanging up to dry behind me. I have done my skincare. I ate my soup, which was good. And I've decided I'm not reading The Shadow People. I'm disappointed because like I said, um, I didn't know exactly what the tone or the outcome of the book was going to be. But either way, I was looking forward to the story. 
Um, but I was peeking at the reviews and there are a few negative reviews that have just convinced me that I do not want to read this. I wish I read them before I requested this on NetGalley because I hate not reading arcs I'm given, but I almost never read reviews of books before I read them. Um, but the negative reviews were saying that the people that are in the cult who are like cannibals and are portrayed as being bad, I would assume, are all or mostly all people of color and people with mental illnesses, which is <laughs> yikes. And like based on the paragraph that I read y'all before, I feel like I can see that happening. So I read one more chapter after that, but I am just not interested in continuing at this point. So instead, luckily I had a hold from the library come through, um, Never Saw Me Coming by Vera Curian. And this is a thriller I'm actually really, really excited for. I believe this is a fairly recent release, but we're following this college student named Chloe. She's a freshman honor student, a legging wearing hot girl next door who also happens to be a psychopath. She spends her time on yoga lattes, frat parties, and plotting to kill Will, a childhood friend who wronged her. She's one of seven students at her DC-based college who are part of an unusual clinical study of psychopaths, students like herself who lack empathy and can't comprehend emotions like fear or guilt. The study, led by a renowned psychologist, requires them to wear smartwatches that track their moods and movements. When one of the students in the study is found murdered in the psychology building, a dangerous game of cat and mouse begins and Chloe goes from hunter to prey. Like I said, I think this is a fairly recent release. Regardless of that, I haven't heard anyone talk about this yet, but I'm looking forward to it. All right, I just got back from the library. I picked up just a couple books. First, I got Slade House by David Mitchell. This is the Stacks of Strange book club pick for this month. I, I liked, I think this cover is pretty ugly, but the book itself just looks cool. Like he has a cutout and you open it to, I guess it's a map and like the pages are deckled and it's just kind of like a weird little book. I like it. If you don't know, Stacks of Strange is the book club that I co-host and we just read strange and weird books. Um, I think this is about like a haunted weird house. I don't think I ever fully read the synopsis of this. I'm intrigued. Um, I know Amy from Amy Reads read this already and said she really liked it. If you guys are interested in checking this out, our live show is on October 23rd and it's pretty short. So if you're interested in reading it with us, you definitely still have time. And then I also grabbed a physical copy of, I can't pick it up, um, Razor Blade Tears by S.A. Cosby. I've been listening to this on audio all week, but most of the time, if I can, I would prefer to have a physical copy, especially with um, thrillers and horror. I really struggle listening to those on um, audio. I want to see how far I am into this. I think I was just on chapter 14. Oh, okay, I literally, the last line I listened to is the first line on page 84. Uh, it's kind of not as far as I thought. I'm not loving this, if I'm gonna be honest. And like I just said, I struggle listening to thrillers on audio, although so far I wouldn't really describe this as a thriller, um, but maybe that has something to do with it. I'm entertained, but I'm not fully loving or enjoying the story and my experience reading it, but we will see. Um, tonight, I just feel like having a super chill like cozy night like I want to light a candle and just curl up with a book and a blanket I think I'm going to continue and never saw her coming for tonight and then I'm going to read um a section from the anthology because I didn't read a section yesterday for it never saw her coming I got about like 20% of the way into it last night um and I read you the synopsis and so far the synopsis is what I've read um and I'm Again, I'm entertained by it and I'm interested to see where it goes. I don't exactly know how I feel about the, I was going to call it representation, but it's really not representation at all. Um, but the discussion of psycho psychopathy and psychopaths, um, because it just feels like a little off. I think I mentioned in the synopsis, this girl, Chloe, is a psychopath, is diagnosed as a psychopath and at this school joins this research study for uh, her and other psychopaths. And the psychologist leading the study talks about how he wants to 
destigmatize de de psychopathy and how, you know, usually the only psychopaths we see portrayed are killers and criminals. And he wants to destigmatize that and show people that, um, you know, a lot of people are psychopaths and they are just living typical, normal, um, non-violent lives and they just want to, you know, like these people are doing, going to school, get a job, so on and so on. But then the main character we're following, like I also mentioned, wants to kill this guy. So it's just weird because it kind of feels like the author is trying to, like her feelings kind of align with what the professor was saying and she is also a psychologist, the author. Um, but then it's like she's portraying the same stereotype, kind of. I don't know. So I'm just having like a hard inner battle with that. But like I said, I am entertained. Um, reading from Chloe's perspective reminds me a little bit of reading from Joe Goldberg's perspective. I think whether or not there is like violence or criminality involved, um, reading from the perspective of, of a psychopath is just interesting. I know this angle kind of sucks, but I don't feel like holding this up right now. Um, so I just finished the next section in the anthology. This was probably my least favorite section so far, and I'm hoping it will be my least favorite section of the book. Um, I kind of thought it was going to be, and I was actually thinking about skipping it. This is the witchcraft section, and I'm not big into witches, um, so I didn't think I was going to love it. And I didn't, but I still came out with some favorites from it. So I had three stories that I gave four and a half stars. Those were my highest ratings. The first was Bernard by Kai Huddleston. The next was The Lake of Poppets by Jessica Ann York. And the last one was The Hag's Gift by Villamy Mist. Even though this wasn't my favorite section, I'm still really, really enjoying this anthology. I just think it's really well put together. I really like the collection of authors they have in here. Um, and I'm excited to check out more stuff from the ones that I've been noting down. There are two sections left and I am excited for both of them. It is, I think, Into the Woods or In the Woods and Cemetery Chillers. believe it's day six and I haven't finished a single book yet. I'm a little I'm not stressed about it because I don't stress over my reading but I'm a little discouraged. I used to be a readathon queen like finishing four to five books <laughs> in a week and now I haven't finished any. So I have a lot of stuff I want to get done today. Um, I slept in quite a bit. Well kind of. I still feel so tired. I woke up at like 5 30 wide awake but i was like my ass is not getting up right now so i just kind of hung out in bed for a while and then i fell back asleep probably around like 8 30 until like 10 so a little bit of a late start i don't remember the last time i woke up this late but i've gotten ready eaten breakfast i've been cleaning up a little bit that's something i want to get done today um i've been doing my weekly clean on saturdays and it just makes me feel really good so i want to do that my bathroom is done but i still have the rest of the apartment to do. I also want to go grocery shopping and along with that finish three books in two days. I am already more than halfway through two of them and I think about 20-ish percent of the way through the third one so I feel like I maybe can do it but we'll see. Also tonight I am hosting a watch along for there's somebody in your house I think that's what it's called it's like the um 
movie adaptation of that book by Stephanie Perkins, which I never read. I've heard pretty bad reviews of the book, but um, I usually like like teen slasher movies, so I wanted to watch this. And I was just gonna watch it by myself, but <laughs> I've been a little scared watching scary movies by myself living here. Um, so I selfishly planned a watch along through the Sack of Strange book club so I won't feel so alone and I think I might do a couple more throughout the month so if you want to watch some movies with me go follow the Instagram I will have it linked down below. I think when I go grocery shopping I'll bring my headphones so I can listen to razor blade tears as I shop and drive. As you guys saw yesterday I had a super nice self-care spoily um night after work i know a lot of people like to do their full shower skincare reset routine on sundays but i really like doing it on fridays after work like i just feel like anything from that week that annoyed me or stressed me out i'm just like washing away and starting fresh for the weekend and then the part of the company that i actually work for was acquired by another company and as like a welcome gift they sent out um, gift cards to uber eats so i ordered some food I will never use Uber Eats again. It was such, like, it felt like such a scam. Half of my final bill was like taxes, a service fee, uh, a tip, and a delivery fee. Like, it was so expensive just because I ordered from Uber Eats. With the gift card, I still ended up paying like 10, $15, I think. Um, so yeah, I will never order from them again, but the food was good. I also read a good chunk of Never Saw Me Coming. I think I've been calling it Never Saw Her Coming. Um, I think I'm like 70% of the way through. I'm not loving it. There's like two separate storylines going on and I'm kind of wondering if they're gonna merge at the end. Um, but I wish it was just focused on one or the other. Like murders are happening within the research program and Chloe is trying to find out what happened and is like being a little detective. But then she's also still trying to like follow Will and um planning to kill him like i don't know it just feels a little disjointed i'm also not loving following chloe being a detective like running around trying to figure out what's going on her and two other people from the program i know a lot of people don't normally like that trope um of like following someone trying to investigate or following detectives it can be hit or miss for me. I don't always hate it, but in this instance, I'm not loving it. Okay, I thought I would do a little bit of a quick grocery haul. I tried to organize it into sections that make sense so we can go through this pretty quickly. So first, stuff I like to eat for quick meals. I usually have these for lunches during the week. Um, they're these stuffed chicken breasts. They have like broccoli and cheese on the inside. I used to eat these all the time as a kid. Like my mom would always give them to us and I still love them. I also got these chicken patties. I like to make sandwiches with these. For snacky stuff, I got some bananas. I also put these in my oatmeal in the morning. I got cucumbers, which I'm obsessed with. Um, I got cheese sticks because I'm like a toddler. Um, and these yogurts, which are my favorite yogurts. They're the We Yoplait raspberry yogurts. They taste so incredible. The texture of them, if you're like a big texture person, these are amazing and i also like that the jars are um glass i actually save a lot of them a lot of the time and put little plants in them these ones have like little flowers on the side this week i'm gonna be making this recipe i found on instagram and it's literally one of the best things i've ever made at home it's uh cajun chicken pasta i'll try to remember and link it down below because it is so good so i just got chicken cream cheese heavy cream um a pepper fire roasted tomatoes, tomato paste, chicken stock, and then like miscellaneous stuff. I got a lot of desserty things, which I shouldn't have, but I just could not resist. I got this pumpkin roll, which has a cream cheese filling. It looked oh, just delectable. Another thing I couldn't resist, sea salt caramel chocolate chunk cookie dough. These look out of this world. And um, this same brand from Kroger, Private Selection, has uh, sea salt, caramel, little chocolates, and they're so good. Speaking of those, they were sold out of them. Um, so I just got the Ghirardelli sea salt dark chocolate caramels. These are really good too. More chocolate. I got the dark chocolate chunks. Um, again, I love the texture of these. They're chunks, not chips. So they're like thick. And when you bite into them, it's just 
I don't know. The texture just really does it for me and I love dark chocolate. I really like putting them in these raspberry yogurts. That's like my new favorite snack obsession. I go through really strong food fixations. I'm pretty sure that's an ADHD thing. Um, I also got some caramel. I used this in my coffee. And last I got some like they're Kroger brand, but they're like Mio, what are these called? Liquid water enhancers. Um, I don't know how like good or bad these are for you. I really like them though. I don't have them a lot. I usually have like one glass of my water a day will be these. So I got the strawberry watermelon one, which apparently has vitamins in it. I think I'm gonna add this to the, um, that watermelon buzz ball. I got white grape peach, which sounded, which sounded really good. I've never had this one. And then I got strawberry kiwi and this one is like an energy drink. And that is everything I got. And it was stupidly expensive. I know the lighting and quality of this clip is gonna be really shitty, but it's pretty late. Um, earlier I finished the book I was reading and I just finished watching There's Someone Inside Your House. So I have two reviews for you. Um, the movie sucks. It was pretty bad. There were a few good moments, um, but a lot of it was boring. And then there were a lot of parts where I wasn't sure what the tone of the movie was supposed to be. Like, I couldn't take it seriously at all. It felt like a parody or satire. It felt like scary movie or something. And I'm not a critical movie reviewer. I love watching movies. And basically, like, if it entertains me, I think it's a good movie. And that's pretty much my rating system. Um, but yeah, I really did not like this one. And unfortunately, I really didn't like um, Never Saw Me Coming. I think I'm gonna give it like two and a half stars. I was thinking three, but I honestly think it's a little generous. <laughs> kind of similarly to the movie, it was pretty boring. And I think it's pretty long for like the type of story it was. I think it's like 400 pages and i don't know it just felt super long and i think that's because i never felt any sort of like anxiety or fear like it never made my heart race it never made me feel scared or anything we do at one point read from the perspective of someone who is murdering somebody and i i like read the part and i was like i feel nothing which is kind of scary but like i just read someone kills uh, i just read about someone killing someone and like it made me feel nothing. And that's how the entire book was. And the twist, I don't understand. Um, it was and was not surprising. And I can't go into that anymore without spoiling it. And like not surprising in the, oh my God, I'm shocked. Like this is crazy type of way. Just surprising and like, Oh, I didn't really expect that, but also I kind of did. I just didn't really understand the motives of the person who was responsible. And there's also like sort of a romance in here um, that I really did not like reading about. It's pretty shitty. I have such a hard time reviewing thrillers and horror because a lot of times my issues come down to like the things we learn at the end and how things wrap up which I obviously can't talk about at length without spoiling it. Um, so yeah, not one of my favorites, two and a half stars. I can see why some people would like this though. I think for the rest of the night, I'm gonna alternate between watching anti-MLM videos. That's my recent YouTube hole um, and reading Campfire. I was gonna try and say the word, but I can't. I still can't pronounce it. I'm so excited. This is what I spent a good part of my morning doing. Um, I got a new little couch for my balcony and I'm so excited to have like a little place outside to sit. I think especially when it's dark out, I can turn on my little uh, lights I have up. So this is where I'm going to be spending my last day of Sabathon reading this. Ignore the flooring. I want to get a carpet out here at some point. Okay, I finished Razor Blade Tears. I think I'm going to give it three stars. I did start enjoying it a little bit more when I started reading it physically, um, but I think it's maybe just not my type of thriller paired with the fact that I hated our main characters. It's not really like a creepy, twisty mystery thriller. It's like an action thriller. Like I would describe it as 
taken with Liam Neeson, except Liam Neeson has a friend and they're both homophobic and trying to get revenge for their gay sons. I loved the writing in here, like the actual storytelling and the writing was so so good, but I I just I don't know how I'm supposed to feel about the main characters. I do feel like they're supposed to get some sort of redemption arc and I was just scrolling through some reviews and a lot of people are like, oh, Buddy Lee and Ike are so wholesome. What a cute duo. I love this duo. And I'm like, you did? They're fucks. Like, I'm sorry, but I never sympathize with them. I, like, what do you want me to say? I'm sorry you didn't accept your sons until they were murdered and you just felt some intense macho need to get revenge for them. It was entertaining though. I did like the writing, so that's why I'm giving it three stars. I don't know if I would check out more from this author though, just because I <laughs> hated these characters so, so much. Okay, so it is actually a few days after Stabathon officially ended. Um, I did finish everything I was reading by Sunday but it was pretty late and I was just gonna film this wrap up on Monday, but then I was really busy at work and time got away from me. Doesn't matter, here I am. So like I said, I was able to finish the anthology on Sunday. Um, so for the last two sections, I will tell you guys my favorites really quickly. In Within the Woods, my two favorites were The Weighing Box by Michael Harris Cohen, which I gave five stars, and Fruiting Bodies by Jude Reed, which I gave four and a half stars. In Cemetery Chillers, I had three favorites, Waking the Dead by Monique Yuzwa, I gave five stars. Midnight Snack by Angela Sylvain, I gave four and a half stars. And The Grave Listeners by Andrew Cull, I gave four and a half stars. So I added up all of my ratings for all of the stories and it averaged out to 3.3 stars. For my actual rating, I think I'm gonna give it four stars. I just like to use the averaging as a little bit of a guide, but I do always rate anthologies in the end, like off of my enjoyment of the entire book as a whole because I think it's inevitable that not every single story in an anthology is going to work for you and there was only one story that I actually thought was bad. I thought the writing was really really terrible. Um, all of the other stories that I gave lower ratings they weren't bad they were just not for me. Like I said the witchcraft section was not my favorite just because I'm usually not into witchy things. In the within the woods section there were a couple stories that I didn't love um, because it was a lot of like I don't know what the word is almost witchy again but like spiritual with the earth ancestral kind of things which again I'm not so into but the stories weren't bad by any means and I still really really enjoyed the anthology as a whole so yeah four stars I didn't have the best reading week I DNF'd a book which I'm actually happy about um, I gave two books three stars and I gave another book four stars, but that's okay. I still had fun participating in the readathon. This made me watch so many scary movies. I've been watching like two to three scary movies a day. While I'm working, I usually always have like YouTube or a show or movies playing and I've been binge watching horror and I've been loving it. I know I didn't talk about the bingo tic-tac-toe board at all during this week, so let's pop it up now. Let's see if I completed it. I think I might have. So the first one, read a book involving children and or dolls. Um, the anthology fulfilled that. I think the anthology might fulfill every single prompt except um, the by a black or indigenous author. Post a throwback pic of a Halloween costume or dress up and post a picture. I actually didn't think I was gonna be able to complete this because obviously I'm in my new apartment. I don't have like old pictures and stuff and I didn't want to dress up. I don't, I don't like dressing up for Halloween even though I love it so much. But I was randomly looking through my camera roll on my phone and I found this picture that my mom sent me a really long time ago. I will pop it up here. It's from 2002 I think. It is so cute. I'm not even dressed up in it but it is from Halloween and I guess I dressed my little bear up. I think this picture is so funny because like I look so dead behind the eyes. I look like I have not a single thought going on in my head. The next prompt was to read a book with black or orange on the cover. I think all of the books I read fulfill that. This has orange on the cover. I think Never Saw Me Coming does. And I think the anthology does as well. Read a book set during the summer. A lot of stories in the anthology took place in the summer. There's a free space. Watch your favorite scary movie. Can I cross this one out? Like I said, I've been watching a ton of scary movies but I haven't watched my favorite. I think my favorite scary movie is The Strangers. Um, it just, home invasion is like one of my biggest fears. 
So this movie just scares me to another level. And I didn't watch that, but I think I'm gonna watch it sometime this month. So can I check this off or not? Because I technically didn't watch my favorite, but I'm just gonna pretend it says watch a scary movie. <laughs> I'm such a cheater. Read a book with supernatural vibes, the anthology, read a slasher, again, the anthology. And the last one is read a book by a black or indigenous author of color. And that is Razor Blade Tears. Okay, so I did complete all of them or maybe not all of them if you don't want to give me the little cheaty movie one so that is going to be all for this vlog i had such a fun time during this readathon it did exactly what i hoped it would and really got me in the mood for some horror i hope you guys enjoyed if you participated in this readathon let me know what you read thank you so much for watching and i will see you in my next one bye